everybody. Uh, so I've had a lot of questions about my log cart, uh, details of it and whatnot. And I want to take a little bit of time and just spend with you, go over this log cart, uh, some of its uh, features and uh, good points and drawbacks, I guess you could say. Uh, so I'm gonna start off with the tongue. We'll just start out at the front and we'll go to the rear. And y'all, uh, all these tools that I've got on here, like this PV, uh, my grab hooks, my skip hammer, uh, plans for the log cart. I'm going to put links to all those down in the description below so y'all can go look at them and see them. And, you know, anybody that's interested in it can go find the stuff that I've got on this cart. So, let's talk about the tongue first. Uh, this tongue is a metal tongue. It's a two and a half inch square tubing tongue by one eighth inch wall thickness. Uh, so it's a good stout tongue. It's not too awful heavy. Uh, one thing that we do uh, here, let's start on the end. Now on my cart, I use tongue chains, which here in Tennessee is kind of a traditional thing on stiff tongue wagons. And the reason why they're used on stiff tongue wagons here in Tennessee, especially we're in the mountainous region, uh, is because on a stiff tongue wagon, the, stung, the tongue sticks straight out. It don't go up or down. It does have a little bit of lee wave motion in it, uh, like when they're going up, you know, in dips and hollers, whatever you want to call it. So there's a little bit of give in the tongue, but the idea of it is, is when your mule is or horse is sitting over here, your tongue chain is just sort of loose like this right here. And they've got two rings, you know, depending on the size of the stock, which a lot of times, like with my mules, I wind up dropping uh, three lengths you know, and, and I wind up hooking in a link like this. But anyway, uh, on a stiff tongue wagon, the idea of it is, is that when they're walking along, your tongue chains is just kind of loose like this. So whenever the wheels on a, on a wagon, they hit a rocks and stuff like that, that tongue can move freely. Uh, and these chains will slip on a breast chain on the mules and not get their neck sore. That's the idea behind it. Now, one thing I like about tongue chains, especially on this log cart, you can adjust the, the height of the tongue a lot easier than you can with a martingale type harness, uh, breast straps. Uh, and when you're using breast chains, and I know this might be kind of hard for you to wrap your brain around, but the mules or horses, the stock, let's just say the stock, has more flexibility to move in and out on the tongue you know they can see what i'm saying they can move this chain in and out whereas if there's a breast choke in between them if one mule moves or horse moves if one stock moves the other stock has to move for that mule to move freely with these breast chains one can move and the other one keeps standing where he's at uh, so it gives your mules or horses more flexibility in and out when they're turning let's just say i'm on the lead side and i was going to turn to the left when i turn left i'm the one doing the turning this mule over here her chain is going to be slack this mule is going to be the one controlling the turn uh where that one over there his chain is going to be a little bit slack and uh you, you don't get that that your mules have to really really be in fine tuned step together to use a breast yoke and do it really effectively whereas with this it makes the turning a lot easier it makes turning together a lot easier and you'll get a smoother turn uh these tongue chains used in conjunction with stay chains on my double tree and we're going to talk more about the stay chains in a minute the stay chains will keep that tongue from slapping them in the knees going side to side you know that's coupled with with stay chains that that'll help with that uh now now that we covered the tongue chains, that's how we hook on the front. That's your brakes. That hooks into your animal's breast chains or martingale, whatever you got on your harness. And that's how they hold the load back. Of course, on a log cart, you ain't got much load for them to hold back because you're going downhill. Now, if you was on a wagon, that'd be a different story. On a stiff tongue wagon, same deal. When they start down a hill, your uh, under harness or whatever type of harness you're using, uh the chains will hold the load back so it serves the same purpose as it does the breast yoke now if you just wanted to you could cut you a stick similar to a spreader and stick right in these rings and you can make you a, a sort of a kind of a redneck made type 
a spreader bar that would keep your animals apart if you so desired but I found that it's not necessary if you got these chains on here and you got your lines adjusted right your animals will stay spread apart like they're supposed to and like I said these chains give them a little flexibility I have tried it both ways if y'all go back and watch some of my first videos when I first built this cart and started using it I had a breast yoke on it I've used chains I like the chains better it gives them a little more room to flex when they're going in and out of the woods around stumps around trees I just like the chains better that's my personal preference if you like a breast yoke though there's nothing wrong with that either okay moving right along the next thing we're going to talk about is right here this is a d-ring and y'all come right here marcy she can show y'all uh this ring is not actually completely oval it's actually d it's flat on this side to where it allow it to swivel like that this ring right here is the ring we use when we're working four to hitch four the front team stretcher hook will hook right here in this ring and coupled with the tongue chains you hook your stretcher under the bottom and your tongue chain still has got that flexibility to where when you hook your front team on you can go ahead and go now i've had people ask me well zach why don't you use a set of pulley ropes for working four well pulley ropes work fine for evening out a farm load out in the middle of a field where you don't have a lot of stuff binding you up and limbs hitting it and all that kind of stuff but in the woods it don't work all that great not to mention the fact that you got to get this card in some precarious situations backing it up in holes up in a treetop you know stuff like that so what you have to do a lot of hooking and unhooking where the lead team usually has worked on one line and with a stretcher you can just you know you ride your lead wheel mule like y'all saw me do in the videos when you get to where you're going you just hop off your wheel mule take your, your lead team out drop the stretcher on the ground drop your line on the ground right there where you're at take your cart and your wheel team get them positioned get hooked to the logs you know square it up whatever you need to do then bring them right around here hook them in the ring climb up on your lead wheel mule and, and roll on whereas if you use pulley ropes uh for your hitch the pulley ropes are going to get hung on everything and not to mention you've got ropes coming down the side of all four animals and you've got to unhook and hook those pulley ropes uh and then using four or two sets of lines driving the front team and the rear team y'all i mean i've done it both ways i've drove two teams with two lines working four and and it works okay but again it's aggravating taking them in and out that's the part where it gets to be uh less productive when you can work the front team to one line and have the back team lines tied up like i've showed y'all in the videos to me that's the best way to work for and get the most out of your animals in the woods because you can unhook and hook the front team very easily and you don't have all that stuff coming down the side that's going to get tangled and everything and you don't have to do all that unhooking you know it's just one hook here versus unhooking a whole the front team back here then you got to rehook the back team to get them repositioned and y'all you're going to have to get this log cart positioned and doing it with four well it's hard to do with four. I ain't saying you couldn't do it, but it is less productive by far. All right, so moving on down the tongue. My tongue, I believe, is 10 foot from the end to my hitch pin, which is right here. This is my hitch point on the cart. And this is just an old uh, screw clip, uh, excuse me, screw clevis that I welded down to it. And I built this cart myself, y'all. And again, I am going to get y'all a plan so y'all can see it. There's a few things that I did a little different. I didn't change no uh, critical measurements, but I did do a couple little things different. Uh, I want to talk about my double trees next. I want to try to stay in order as we're going toward the rear. Uh, these are 42 inch double trees with 28 inch single trees. Uh, if you've got a large team, you're going to want to go bigger than that. You know, you're going to want something like a 44 inch double tree and 30 inch single trees uh my mules ain't overly big you know they're 1400 pounds roughly uh so this this double tree and single tree combination works pretty good for me uh the idea though with these stay chains now see i've got my double tree pinned in the middle most of their pulling if they're together as long as they stay right together they're pulling off this single pin in the middle okay but I want y'all to look at the swing. See how much swing it has? I've got, oh, I don't know, inch and a half, maybe two inches of swing. So let's just say our off mule over here is kind of rambunctious and 
you know, like to jump ahead and pull more of her share of the load, whatever. Uh, when she jumps forward, she's gonna tighten that stay chain up. You're gonna have two points of contact to pulling. You're gonna have the pin and you're gonna have that stay chain back there where it's pulling off that stay chain. Uh, one thing that's gonna do is that's gonna discourage that behavior. It's gonna help you to manage, get your animals together a little bit better. Uh, and two, it's gonna help you uh, keep your tongue down. And if I can say this in a way that it makes sense, a lot of the old log carts here in Tennessee back in the day, they did not have a pin in the middle here on their double tree. Basically, they just had a spreader bar with chains that went back to the uprights and they pulled directly off the stay chains. And you know, your, your spreader bar may be like right out here and your stay chains will go down a little bit lower. So what it would do is it would put pressure here and it would pull back there on the uprights. Uh, and that would help kind of keep your, your tongue down. And I've sort of similar done the same thing with what I've got going on uh, with what I've got here. Uh, but for the main part, is to keep my mules from getting too far out of whack because when they go to seesawing like that they're not going to move a load a lot of times if you've got an, even a decent team one of them is going to be just a little ahead of the other they're not always going to go together now you want to strive for per, ugh, strive for perfection you want both animals to squat and go together at the same time that's hard to get in the very beginning so in the very beginning especially these stay chains will help you because when that one mule hits it hard they can only go an inch and a half before they get all the load. And then that gives the other mule time to catch up and get in there with it. And now y'all, if you don't have stay chains and one mule gets way ahead, it slings this other mule so far back that they have to really, really shower down on it to get caught back up. And usually they don't. Uh, you wind up just stopping and starting over. Uh, again, the stay chains, another thing they do, uh, they will take a lot of the tongue uh, movement out of it. If you didn't have the stay chains, the, the cart tires would kind of, they would do this number, like that right there. Well, when the cart wheels do that number like that right there, you can imagine with a 10 foot tongue sticking out here how much movement it gets left and right. You get a lot of movement in the tip of that tongue, and what that'll do is that'll soar your animals. But if you're pulling off the stay chains or you've got stay chains on there and you got them fairly tight, I mean, you know, mine could probably use a little adjustment maybe uh but if you've got them fairly tight that'll take a lot of that wiggle out and if y'all go back and watch my videos and pay attention to that you don't see hardly no tongue slap going on my tongue ain't sitting here doing this right here and the reason is is because of these these right here is a secret now, that's one thing i did add that i did different and all i did was just run chain from the double tree and i welded me a little ear on right here and put a clevis in it that's the only thing i did it don't matter how you get the stay chain on there, just as long as it's on there, okay? Uh, let's see. Now, the next thing we can talk about is... Come right around here to the back. Let's talk about the seat for a minute. Now, I've seen a lot of different log carts and been on a lot of different log carts. And I'm going to tell you why I use a bench seat. You don't have to use a bench seat if you don't want to, but I'm telling you why I do it. At some point in time, if you ride these carts enough, you're going to turn it over. Even if you've got a good steady team with a whoa, when you say whoa, man, these things can flip over just that fast if you get them in a certain bind. Uh, and when they do flip over, if you've got a bench seat like this, you can just slip off one side. On the side where it's going, you can slip off to that side and ain't no big deal. If you've got one of those spring type seats, that's a center section seat like it's on a four cart, if you have one of those and you hit a rock or a bump or a stump, it will launch you off that thing like a bullet. Uh, so that's why I use a bench seat. Now all this is, this is just a school bus seat. It's a school bus seat and look right under here. Uh, I just made a little old small angle channel frame, welded it together, and then I just screwed this bus seat to it. And then right here, look right here. I've got a pipe inside of a pipe with a screw, uh, a bolt and a nut this uh that's, that serves as lock and adjust the height of the seat up and down and i like my seat to sit a little higher just because i have more leg room okay now uh let's talk about these uprights and now y'all this is what makes this cart work this is a charlie fisher style design log cart uh come right here marcy where they can see because i and i tell you what let me 
Let's come right here on the inside and show them right here on the inside. What I want y'all to see is, is this upright right in here, it comes down, and if y'all look at the shaft where I've got the shaft welded in, look right down here where this shaft is. This shaft is approximately three quarters of an inch to the back of the center of this upright up here. So in other words, it comes down and it makes a sweep back. Okay, now let me tell you what that does. What that's gonna do is whenever you step up to pull a log and you get all the slack out of the chain, when you, when you step your team up to pull, the tongue is gonna rise. That's the first thing it does. And then when they get short enough tight and they load up on it, it's gonna pull the tongue back down. And what this, what this sweep does it acts like a chain boomer. I know y'all seen, uh, y'all probably seen my chain boomers on my log truck, uh, where when you pull it over, it kind of cams over center. When it cams over center, it locks. That's kind of what this does, sort of similar, same setup. When them mules pull and they get the tongue back down, that tongue locks over center, and wherever you got your chain set, it'll, it'll lift that log a certain amount, and when it locks over center, it'll help, it'll help the mules hold it there while they're pulling it. Okay, now one thing I've done, I've welded me some pipe right here on the side, uh, and I've got my PV stuck in it. Now I'll just tell you, these PVs ain't gonna do you a whole lot of good unless it's small logs. If you've got big logs, you're gonna have to have something else to roll it. And what I use to roll big logs, and I know y'all seen me do it, I use a swamp hook, which is basically if you can find, if you can find, if you can find a set of these, an old set, look right here. Look at there. If you can find an old set, you can make you a, you can make two swamp hooks out of one set of these. This is a set of tongs. These are CM Dixie. They're one inch, uh, one inch stock, and they'll handle a 25 inch tree. Let me hang my swamp hook back. Uh, they'll go out to 25 inches. Okay, now, let me show you this. Let's just say you had one that was bigger than 25 inches and you had to ground skid it. Put your swamp hook on there like that right there. Now you've got an extra 10 or 12 inches. Does that make sense? Now, yeah, I know some of y'all are gonna say, well, you ain't pulling off center. Well, that's fine. It ain't pulling off center. The log might pull a little bit sideways, but that's the difference between doing what you have to do and getting by. That's just a little trick. Uh, a friend of mine, Jeff Fergie, Somerville, Tennessee, he logs a lot with uh, tongs, and he taught me this little trick. And it works pretty good, you know. It'll get you out of a bind, and you won't have to have one set of tongs. And about that, these one-inch 25 tongs, 25-inch tongs, one-inch around by 25-inch, that's all you need as a mule logger. If they're good tongs, you can skid, you can skid anything from 16 inches all the way up to 25. And then if you got you a good swamp hook, it'll get you on up to 30 inches very easily. And I'm gonna tell you, y'all, if y'all skidding 30 inch logs, that's a load. That is a load on a pair of mules or a pair of horses. So if you're skidding that kind of timber, you're probably gonna have a cart anyway, and you ain't gonna worry about using uh, tongs. Uh, the PVs I like, <clears throat> they're made by PV Manufacturing up in the North, New England area, nor uh, Northeast. Uh, PV manufacturers who makes these PVs are good heavy duty PV. They've got a good uh, hook on them, a good point. They're just, they're good. The handles take a lot of abuse. It stays right here on my log cart. It's a handy uh, thing to have to roll logs with, you know, get chains on it and whatnot. And two, it serves whenever you come up here and you step on it, you know, put your foot right here on the step, you got a handle to hold to. Uh, now, these are grabs. Uh, some of y'all have probably used them. Some of y'all may not have never seen them before. These are grabs. I get these from Horse Logger Supply, my friend Rich Drummond. Uh, him and his partner, they make these. They, uh, they've they got the mold for them and whatnot. I made some rings for them. I'm gonna have to go back and do some work on them because we pulled some god awful big timber the last few days. My mules is all blown the rings and my welds is coming apart. In uh, fact, I'll show y'all uh, here's here's the remnants of yesterday and we didn't get no footage yesterday because I want to do this log cart deal But there's uh my mules are getting stronger y'all 
or my wells are getting weaker it could be a little bit of a combination of the two or it could just be that i just ain't a good welder but anyway these are half inch cold roll rings and they're broke so we'll have to do a little heating and beating and get them fixed but that ain't no big deal but again these grabs you can pick these grabs up at horseloggersupply.com i'll put that in the description below too and i'm not getting kickbacks from none of these people so it ain't got nothing to do with me uh with them giving me stuff and none of that i just want to tell y'all where i get the stuff at and that way if y'all want some y'all can go there and get it so i've got these little uh cold roll uh rods i guess you could call them whatever you want to call it that sticks up right here this is where i hang my rings now some people's rings they've got chain in between them you know i use these rings for different things uh i'll hammer one into a log if it's a smaller log and it's a low grade and i can't get a chain on it and it's gonna be aggravating ain't no point in wasting no time y'all just drive a grab in the thing and hook your chain and go on and when i hook my chain i'll just come up here with my slip hook slip it through here like that <clears throat> well i was gonna tell y'all it'd be easy but maybe not anyway y'all get the idea so now you've got a chain right there you know hammer that thing in a log roll on if you've got a big log uh and you can't get under it for some reason and you can't get in there and get a swamp hook to it to roll it so sometimes y'all a swamp hook is the only way you're gonna move this big timber if you want to roll it over that's the only way you're gonna do it that pv ain't gonna get it not on the big stuff not on heavy hardwood uh if that be the case you can take two of these grabs you can you can let, let's just say this tire right here is your log say you're looking at it and this is the butt end of your log you drive one grab on this side you drive one grab on this side like this okay y'all with me all right once you get them two gra grabs drove in each side of that log then you come off your, your chain right here you come through that ring through the next ring and back up to the log cart now what you've got is you've got a lower center of pull it's the same thing as using two chains like i showed y'all the other day where you choke the log on each side down low the only difference is you ain't having to get a chain on it to choke it you just drive it in and here's a skip hammer by the way this is what a skip hammer looks like again horseloggersupply.com they've got these you can get them from them uh you drive your grab in with it and <clears throat> now i'm not trying to offend nobody <laughs> but you use this side right here this is what you hammer the big end you hammer it in then when you're ready to take it out you take and hit it right here right here along the side of it it's drove in a log imagine that and when you hit it you hit it right there and with that thing being pointed like it is it'll wedge and it'll just pop it right out nothing to it all right so now that y'all know about grabs and stuff hammers here's one more set of grabs i keep these on my cart i use these a lot when i'm when i'm skidding with the stretcher but most of my equipment stays on my cart these are head grabs i've showed y'all these before you can drive these in on each side of a log if it's a bigger log hook your stretchers in the center ring and pull off of that or if you've got smaller logs you can hook one grab to one log one grab to another log you can pull two logs at one time head grabs all right so let's put all that back again i'll put all this in the description below where you can get it if some of y'all you know tinker with horse logging and you know want to know where to get this stuff uh now on your on your chain let me show y'all the chain i'll show you how i got mine set up i've got two 12 foot chains i've got a slip hook on one side and when i say slip hook it needs to have that c shape see it that way you don't have one of them safety tabs because all you're going to do if you got a safety tab you're going to bend it and break it and it ain't no count no way i'm just going to tell you but you need a slip hook on one end you need a grab hook on the other all right let's just say you get off out there and you've got a log way out there that you can't get to well what you do is you've got that one chain that goes out there now you've got another chain that you can pull out of your cart and look here you got a grab hook hook that grab hook in now you got double your chain because i got two 12 footers all right and now i've also got a 16 footer you could have two 15 foots and an 18 foot if you wanted to or two 15 foots and a 20 foot if you got bigger timber that your average you know more bigger timber that your average kidding then you're gonna need bigger chains uh me personally 
most of the timber we're in around here in Tennessee is 20 to 25, 26 inches. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty standard. So 12 foot chains work pretty good for us. All right. And right here, come right here and look on these slots. This is what makes it nice, you know, hooking and unhooking your chains. Your chains just fall down in these slots right here. Uh, see, you just take it and pull the slack up, and that's all you got to do to reel it back in. See, I'll take this and feed it in here. And then when you get it where you want it, just let it hang right there like that. All right, and while we're talking about chains and these slots, uh, this is something that I designed myself. This didn't come in the log cart plans. This is a little deal I designed myself, and I kind of derived it from several different ideas of different log carts i've seen over the years uh basically it hinges right here come right here marcy and let them see it hinges right here and right over here look right here there's a block a hinge block where that rod stock sticks in there and there's a block right here and that rod stock sticks in it and there's a grease fit in there of course i need to tighten them up and i need to grease it and all that kind of stuff but anyway this section right here will flip down it, it will trip down like if you get a log that's hung when you get to the landing and your chains is real tight uh come right around to the front marcy and we'll show them uh what you do is is you take this lever and now y'all look watch this deal right here you see this when you turn this lever now look see how it's half moon shaped come right over the top where they can see marcy see how this is half moon shaped let me rotate it like that okay See how it's half moon shaped there, y'all? Now watch this. See how it trips? This is a two-part mechanism. If you just put a lever directly over the top of it, y'all, like if you if it come down and you try to put something over the top of it to hold it, you would never get it loose, not with log pressure on it. Because if log pressure was on it, it'd have so much tension on it that you couldn't get it loose. But seeing how this rotates around it, see how that shaft is inside of these carrier bearings? And they got grease points on them. Uh, and they need to be greased, by the way. Uh, but anyway, see how it rotates around that? There's a shaft that's welded to this plate here. And that rotates around it. See that? And then it lets it dump. And it'll release your chains. When you get your chains loose, pull it back down. Push your handle over and you got it recaptured. That is the secret on quick turnaround for releasing your chains. It just makes things so much easier. So much easier. Okay. Now, the last thing I need to talk about on this log card, I think, is right here. Let me show you this. And this is this is not something I come up with. This is something a friend of mine came up with, Eric Hicks, over in Charlotte, Tennessee. It's right here. This chain is on the bottom part of the log cart, and it's hooked here with a clevis. Now, if you've got a long chain to pull a log out of a hole or whatever, you want to hook onto this. You don't want to hook up here. Because if you've got it hooked long and you go to pulling kind of sideways on it, you're going to turn the cart over. Guaranteed. Because you're above the center of gravity. You're above the center of where your pull is, your center of pull. If you get down here, you're under the center of pull, and it tends to suck the cart to the ground, not above it if that makes any sense. So, get you a little piece of short chain. This is about a whole foot long. Put your grab hook on it, and you can pull off of that. And then when you ain't using it, it just kind of hangs there in, in a la-la land. Okay. Let me see if there's anything else I forgot. I used heavy-duty axles. I used 3,500-pound uh, implement axles in here. Uh, on the log cart plans, it gives you a choice of using quarter-inch, 5 16 or 3 8 inch material thickness on your channel iron and stuff like that i went with the middle i went with 5 16 it just kind of runs in the middle you can go quarter and it'll be lighter or you can go 3 8 and it'll be heavier i went with 5 16 just because it was the middle of the road you know you got to remember one thing y'all we're working with animals <laughs> so you gotta you gotta balance the whole being stout versus too heavy uh on on the flip side of that <laughs> On the flip side of that, though, you've got broke stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you've you got to balance that. 
Now, like I said, this could be just a problem on my wheels. <laughs> Might not be nothing to do with the mule. But I will say, I have had animals that would break stuff. You know, when they get to really, when they get to where they know how to pull hard and really handle a load, y'all, they'll tear stuff up. They'll break stuff, which is not their fault. They're doing what you train them to do, and they're doing uh, their part to produce. The, you just gotta have good equipment. You gotta have something stout enough that'll, that'll stand up to that. Uh, these tires that's on it is, let me see here. I know they are implement tires. They're nine and a half L. Nine and a half L by 15s is what they are. And like I said, again, this is a 3,500 pound axle spindle. So it's built good and heavy. These tires are a little bit taller. Now, if you got a shorter team, yeah, you could go with a smaller size wheel. And, you know, that's fine. I mean, I probably should have shorter tires on mine. But the thing you got to remember, y'all, the higher this card is, the more lift you're going to get on your logs. Or you've got to use a cradle hitch with the double chains choked on each side down low. Or you've got to use two of these grabs with rings on it with the chain loop through it to pull to get a, a lower center of pull, which is going to give you more lift. This cart, you don't have to do no tongue lifting. You don't have to do no fancy gymnastics or nothing like that. All you've got to do is back up on the log, get square, hook your chain in your chain slots as short as you can get it. And whenever you step up the pull, when they step up the pull, you're going to get lift in that log. And then your weight is going to be transferred on this frame over these axles uh, and wheels and the, and the cart itself is going to carry the butt weight of that log and it's going to make it a tremendous amount easier on your animals these carts are so much more productive y'all now am i married to it no <clears throat> no i'm not and i will tell you why because this cart is not always the most productive way to do it sometimes in storm blown timber you know storm damage you can't get a car around in storm blown timber so the best thing to do is to use a set of stretchers and these tongs right here. If you're real close in on the log truck, uh, you know, where you're using real short skids, and when I mean short skids, I'm talking about 20 yards. Uh, the skid tongs and a set of stretchers is the way to go because you can get hooked and unhooked so fast. You know, it's so much more productive. Y'all, there's a tool for every job. And every tool is not the best tool for every job. You know, sometimes stretchers and tongs is better sometimes this log cart and the team is better you know using choker chains uh sometimes grab hook you know grabs are better uh you know the the sky is the limit on what's the best way to go about it sitting right over there is a project that we've got marcy showing my project it's a log wagon uh i'm gonna be fixing that log wagon here in the next uh week or so to where we can start using it to cross haul logs with uh, on our longer skids that's where the wagon really shines uh because you know you can roll them a whole lot easier than you can drag them so the wagon will come in real handy and to be an effective mule logger or horse logger in today's society i think you have to be uh multifaceted in other words you got to be multi-talented you got to be able to change gears and do what best suits that situation for that day and for that uh, tree and for that log uh Let's see if I forgot anything here. I think I've told y'all just about everything about it. Uh, one thing I did add is these little sideboards on the side right here. Marcy, come show them that. I added just a little piece of flat metal here. It's just uh, to keep my chains from falling off. Uh, now y'all, you'll see people with log carts. Lord, they'll have, they'll have stuff all over it and have chainsaws stuck up in it and water coolers and everything else and that's fine uh i haul all my stuff to the woods usually and then i set it off beside a tree and i leave it there while i'm working now my chainsaw if i take my chain and put my chain back just like that right there my chainsaw fits just right setting it right here and let the bar stick out over there fits just right right there i can take my gas jugs and i can hook them on these slots right here and let them hang off the back i can take my water thermos and hook it on there back there where my rings go and it, and it works out just right. The thing is, y'all, when you get so much junk on a log cart and you turn it over, that's more crap you gotta pick up. <laughs> and not to mention that, you're putting more strain on your animals for nothing. You know, it, yeah, it's minimal weight, don't get me wrong, but when you're in hill country, you know, 
it's hard enough pull on them anyway. Take all that crap off. You know, they don't need to be hauling around all that extra weight. That's another thing about having a real heavy cart. If you're going to be in hill country and you've got a real super heavy cart, it's harder, y'all. It's harder for the animals. Now, one thing I did do on this cart, I designed this cart to where I could use either a metal tongue or a wood tongue. And I'll show you how I done it. Come right here and show them, Marcy. Look right here, y'all see that? That's a tube inside of a tube. It's kind of like a bushing that I made out of another piece of tubing. It is stuck in there in this receiver. This is four inch tubing. I think that is three inch and then this is two and a half. Uh, this right here will come out. And when I take it out, I can just use a wood tongue to stick in there. Okay. But here's the thing, I've tried wood and it's all right. I mean, especially if you get a good quality wood, a uh, horn beam, uh white oak makes really good tongue horn beam uh i'm trying to think of that one wood it'll come to me i don't know it right off the top of my head just yet anyway i'll tell you all about that later but it makes a good type of tongue also and you can do the same thing you know you can use tongue chains put your d-ring on out there cut it the same length whatever you need to do and then mine's got a bolt in it right back here that goes through it uh, that big tubing, the receiver, there's a bolt that goes through it that locks it in so that way, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about it coming out. And for us, you know, pulling off that ring out there, uh, you need something kind of stout. Uh, so, and that's one reason I went back to a steel tongue. Because the weight savings that you get out of the wood, especially if you get something stout enough that'll hold a front team, you know, pulling on it, it it's going to be fairly heavy anyway. Uh, and this tubing ain't no heavier than that wood is more or less so that's why I went back to the tubing yeah it costs a little bit more it's about twice as expensive as a wood tongue but you ain't got to worry about it you know weather cracking and, and all that mess it is a little bit louder when the chains rattle up against it and stuff like that so that's something you got to think about too if you're worried about noise then you might want to use uh, wood okay I think that's about it that I've got on this cart. And again, I'm gonna put everything listed here. The PV, the grabs, uh, the skip hammer, the tongs, you know, everything that I've got on this cart, I'll put it in the description below. So that way, if y'all wanna see where you can go get it, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna put the plans for the log cart. These, these plans, like again, they're Charlie Fisher style log cart. The plans come from Healing Harvest Foundation uh, website. I think it's Healing healingharvestfoundation.org or maybe .com, I'm not sure on that one, but I'll find it and I'll put it in the description below and I'll have a link to the plans to where anybody wants to build a cart can go on there and get those plans and you can build a cart just like this. The only thing is, is you're not gonna have this quick release on here. And I'm trying to get some plans drafted up. I've got a couple engineer buddies that can do CAD work. I'm gonna try to get them to draft me some plans on how we built this uh, quick release. And if I can get those CAD plans drawn up, I'll be more than happy to share that with any of you that wants it. Uh, so, I hope that answers most of your questions on our log cart and what it does. Again, this is a very good tool and asset to a mule logger or horse logger. You can handle bigger timber. It makes it easier to drag. Uh, another thing that you can do, you see it's got multiple slots and this is something I ain't really talked about it's got multiple slots here all the way across it uh, on your trip panel. I can pull three logs just on that trip panel. And I've got some slots over here that don't trip, but I could still hang a chain in there if I wanted to. You could pull doubles or triples if you wanted to. And I have pulled triple tie logs before uh, with it, uh, with Kate and Alice. And Kate and Alice is not an overly big team. So if you've got a real good, you know, real good big stout team of horses or mules, you can take his cart, you can pull doubles and triples, and you can really get some footage out, y'all. So anyway, I hope this answers some of y'all's questions about our log cart and enlightens you about what we, you know, what we do with it and how it's made and how it works. You know, there's a lot of technology in this cart that you wouldn't think is a big deal, uh, but it actually it is. Uh, so anyway, if y'all have any more questions about it, drop me a comment down there in the comment section below. I'll be glad to answer anybody's questions. And uh, thank you all for watching. Take care.